Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Guido Rianna and I work for uh, Regional Models and Geodrological Impacts Research Division of uh, Fondazione CMHC, Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change. Thank you for attending today the webinar aimed at presenting the artifacts, uh, dataset, and the application developed within the framework of a sectoral information system to support disaster risk reduction of Copernicus Climate Change Service. The artifacts will be available in a short time, probably in the next weeks. Today, we have three talks. The first will be given by Chiara Cagnazzo, manager for SNWF of the Sectoral Information System to Support Disaster Risk Reduction. Uh, she will provide an overview about Copernicus Climate Change Service and the Climate Data Store, the recent initiatives concerning uh, uh, the support to disaster risk reduction uh, in which the, our artifacts uh, will be framed. After my colleagues, uh, Alfredo Reder and Paola Mercogliano will provide details about, about the activities uh, and the rationale carried out in the uh, last few years uh, about uh, the products, the scientific background, their use and their applicability. So first, uh, to leave the floor to our three speakers, uh, uh, let me say a few words about uh, uh, CMCC Foundation. CMCC Foundation is a non-profit research organization established in 2005 and became foundation in 2015 um, to better fitting his mission. Uh, his activities cover all the aspects related to climate change, this interaction with society and the environment, supporting uh, the mitigation and the adaptation policies. His seats uh, are all over the Italy, hosting different research divisions. In the specific, at the moment, uh, our structure has 10 research divisions cover uh, uh, all the different aspects related to climate change issue. So, atmospheric and the shear modeling on different time scale from short term, seasonal, decadal and climate projection the impact of climate change uh, on different sectors, for example, water, agriculture, geological hazard, urban environmental, coastal dynamics. Finally, the consequences of climate change in terms of adaptation and mitigation policies, and of course, advanced scientific computing research divisions. Of course, the activities takes advantage of the expertise and experiences of CMCC founding members. Uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, CMCC he highly committed involved in different uh, communication and uh, uh, the dissemination activities, uh, peer review the papers, uh, educational programs, uh, uh, the organization of webinar among which this webinar could be included. So all the activities can be found on the CMCC website. Coming back uh, to the um, uh, today meeting, uh, some insights, uh, your, uh, the audio and video of the participant will be deactivated by default for all the participants. Today uh, will be not a canonical uh, Q&A session, uh, but will be uh, used a Menti survey. So uh, then after the talk uh, by using PC, smartphone, tablet, uh, I'd like to invite, invite you to go to www.menti.com using the code report in the slide. Of course, uh, I will recall uh, it again uh, after the three talks. Nevertheless, we will answer all the questions collected by using the Q&A tab that you can found uh, below or that you can send later by email. So we will answer in next day as soon as possible. Finally, a final note, uh, this webinar will be recorded and uploaded and made available on CMCC YouTube channel. If you have uh, questions about this webinar, webinar, privacy policies and so on, please email to the mail address reported in this slide. So let's move to the three talks. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to leave the floor to Chiara Cagnazzo from SENWF. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guido. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm now sharing my screen. 
Mm, please let me know if you may see my slide in full. Yes. Well, that's yes. great. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everybody. And um, I'm here uh, mostly for an introduction and a welcoming to this event that is organized by CMCC colleagues and by C3S. So my role now is really to give the audience a kind of a framework for this specific activity and where it sits within the Copernicus program. Um, I, I guess the majority of the audience already knows about the Copernicus program, but very briefly, Copernicus is the European program for the Earth observation to monitor the Earth and the environment. So we are talking about um, uh, different data from the Sentinel satellites together with in-situ data that are coming and will continue to become available in the next year. So the important point of this program is that data are free, they are open access, and they are accompanied by the quality information. And C3S, the Copernicus Climate Change Service, is one of the two services that are operated by ECNWF, the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecast, on behalf of the European Commission. So now C3S is uh, an operational program. And uh, as I said, it provides um, free and open access to climate data at different timescales. So we are talking about observations and, and climate simulations. A and the access is given in an authoritative and standardized way. And this happens also through a set of uh, specific tools that are given together uh, with the data. So the purpose is, of course, giving access to the data and, and to enable climate change mitigation and adaptation strategies to a huge variety of users, including also policymakers and businesses. Uh, these slides also include some updates with respect to, to the numbers. So you may see that we have, um, for example, the most popular data set that uh, is found uh, on the C3S infrastructure that is named the Climate Data Store. Um, archives is an archive of about eight petabyte of data. I'm talking about the reanalysis, but also we are um, dealing with uh, a typical daily download uh, by the users uh, um, of about 60 to 70 terabyte of data per day. So the program, as I've said, is an operational program. So this means that we give access not only to data, but the data have to be maintained. So another keyword here is about the continuity and consistency. So the information has to be evaluated and quality controlled. And actually operational means also that there are important aspects related to the user support. Our user support team is very strong and also training components that go uh, with the data. So in practice, we are putting together data, um, technology, and the users. So, um, so this means, of course, that operational means also that on the one side, we are talking about information that has to be updated on a regular basis. Uh, as I was said, quality information, and this is happening across timescales. So we are covering timescales from the past, near real time, but also uh, predictions and projections. So the concept that is behind this slide has to do with what, what we call the climate intelligence, so on the right hand side is a schematic that maybe many people in this audience have already seen if they have participated in different C3S webinars or have seen materials around. And this um, focuses really on, on, on the service, uh, on the quality service chain that links uh, the data to the user. And on the top left, uh, you may see uh, the slide focuses on the monitoring purposes of the data. So here I'm talking about monitoring for adaptation. And uh, on the bottom left side, you can see um, um, how we transform uh, climate data information for specific information that is usable uh, um, and relevant for different sectors that are um, sensitive uh, to climate change and, uh, and climate uh, variability in general. So, what I would like to highlight here is that some products uh, in this quality um, chain are, are mature enough to become really operational uh, sectoral activities, whereas other products are more at the stage of demonstrators or prototypes. But of course, the, the, the service that is going to be um, presented today by CMCC colleagues has to deal with the extreme events and the disaster risk reduction. So the extreme events are among uh, the elements that are dominating the assessment and, and even the perception of the global risks to society. And this is a slide uh, uh, and a figure that comes from the World Economic Forum, the Global Risk Report of 2021. So in practice, the figures is representing the, the perception um, from a huge list of societal actors. And, and climate change is recognized as, as a cause of one of the top risks to society. And uh, by likelihood and by impact, uh, we have extreme events. Um, 
of course, maybe just to summarize here, one, one of the most um, impactful consequences of the climate change is the projected, in, in the projected increase of intensity and incidence of some types of extreme um, um, events, weather and climate events. Uh, for example, we may think, uh, and it is quite well established, that the intensity of extreme precipitation um, increases more largely uh, with the surface global mean temperature than the mean precipitation. And that the total change um, in, the, uh, in the extreme precipitation is a result of both combined changes in intensity and frequency. So in order for this information to be uh, really effective for disaster risk reduction, um, of course, we need information about the past and the future climate risk that has to be easily accessible and based on harmonized and standardized data. This is, this is where uh, the C3S uh, uh, may play a big role. So on the one side, we have um, reference climate data methodologies that have to be uh, made available, including uh, quality um, information, accessibility, and standard criteria. And But also we need information about, or users need information about uh, vulnerability, exposures, uh, and resilience. Uh, so. Another key aspect uh, um, is that uh, for, for an appropriate risk prevention, um, it is important also to understand and characterize what we call, the, uh, we call the baseland risk that is based on past historical periods to see how this evolved over time. And of course, in order to do that, we need good data uh, from the past. And this is in practice where uh, this uh, service element stays, as you will learn, I think soon um, in the next presentation. So it focuses on Europe. It covers uh, about 70 years uh, of past data and 30 years of specific information of for flooding events and their impact. So just to give you a flavor of how important is this, even in the perception uh, of society, uh, may, you may know that uh, um, uh, recently ECNWF opened the third facility in Bonn in Germany. So I moved uh, recently uh, to Bonn. Uh, and uh, actually, we have had last week uh, um, an opening ceremony. And uh, at this ceremony, there was, of course, a representative of the local scientific community, but also of the city of Bonn. And it was really very emotional, um, the moment where there was a clear connection to the flooding event that happened uh, uh, recently this summer in the North Rhine-Westfalen region in Germany. So, um, I'm not going uh, to add any other details because uh, I think you will have a lot of details by our colleagues. Just to summarize here, this service uh, looks uh, at extreme events of precipitation and the associated pluvial flood risk assessment uh, in urban area. This is not yet an operational service. It is a proof of concept. And what it is important for me is that the uptake from the user community is a key element to decide where to expand, uh, where to invest uh, uh, in the next phase. Um, this service will provide uh, uh, also information through a set of data and applications. And again, I'm not going to add any details about that, but just maybe a deadline. Uh, so we um, are planning to publish, uh, to have the, the data sets published next week, if everything um, goes, goes fine, of course. And uh, in the next few weeks, uh, also the applications uh, will become um, available. And uh, I will skip my last slide, otherwise uh, um, I'm going to too late. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chiara. Thank you, Kara. I'm trying to share my slide. Okay. Can you see my monitor? Is it okay? Yes. okay. yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Paola Mercoriano, and I'm going to introduce the main features of this service and its goal. Okay, first of all, the main idea behind this contact service is that to support disaster risk reduction activity, it is really important to give access to the different actors interested on this topic on high quality data that are also easily accessible and concerning not only the characterization of the hazard, the weather event, but also on the impact on the damages and losses related to this event. Of course, disaster risk reduction is a very huge topic. In this service, our team decided to focus the activity on providing uh, to the community data set and application, the artifacts supporting the assessment of the risk associated to extreme rainfall events in Europe, 
with the focus specifically on the urban areas. We focused our attention on urban plural flooding because, as Chiara mentioned before, observation reports that this type of event are increasing, with even greater damage, especially over cities, characterized by also by high exposure in terms of people and assets. Additionally, we also know that it is projected that more and more pe people in the urban area will suffer in the next years from higher flooding risk due to the expected variation of the weather-related extreme connected, connected to climate change, but also to demographic shift. Then, for this reason, it is really crucial to define information supporting policy on adaptation, with the main goal to reduce the economic impact, but also the social environmental impact of this kind of events. To effectively support the community, we built this service um, to reduce these specific four gaps reported in the slide. And this thanks to the engagement through different initiatives um, with the different uh, target groups. These gaps are, are four. The first one, clearly identify the European area most affected by heavy precipitation in the, rest, in the recent decades. The second one, to provide detailed information about the severity and probability of occurrence of this heavy precipitation event, including impact over Europe. The third one, to define a framework to support a reliable, but at the same time, expeditious assessment of areas of potentially interested by urban flooding. And the fourth, understand if there is an added value that very high resolution simulation currently available can give to the analysis of intense precipitation event, especially for ones that are very localized in time and space and occurring over urban areas. In order to obtain this goal, we have realized a portfolio of data set and application that, are, that will be um, soon available on Copernicus Data Store. And we provide with this artifact information at different spatial and temporal scale, coming from precipitation characteristic up to damage and impact at the city scale. In this slide are reported three columns. In the first column, there are the different climate input data set that we have used and on which are based the data set developed for Copernicus data store that are in the second column. And then in the third column, there are the application and data viewer developed for the Copernicus data store. I would like now to spend some more about the climate input data set that we have adopted for this artifact. As you can see, we decided to use, if you look at the list of this data set and are also reporting some basic features, you can see that they, this data set have a very different features. We think that the fact to use a different data set with different characteristics is a really added value for the product that we have implemented. Okay, really, really some few words about the data set. The first one is the ERA-5 reanalysis, represented the first global reanalysis produced, produced by ACMWF with an horizontal resolution of about 31 kilometers. If you are interested to have more detail on this very important data set, you can use the link reported in the slide. And also, we um, perform the analysis with the EOBS dataset. EOBS dataset is a daily graded land only observational dataset available over Europe at a resolution of about 11 kilometers. And this is based on station network available from the project European Climate Assessment and Dataset. Moreover, we also uh, have information coming from the measurement uh, of, the, of this same data set, the European Climate Assessment and Data Set, consisting of observations supplied by National Meteorological Service and other data provided in Europe and adjacent region. In these two pictures, you have information about the localization of the in-situ station. And the last data set that was, was developed specifically for this uh, service is the dynamically downscaling ERA-5 analysis 
era 5 to kilometer data set. It represents an additionally hourly data set at horizontal resolution of about 2 kilometer. It was developed by Dynamic High Downscaling Era 5 with the regional climate model Cosmo CLM, developed by the uh, CLM community. And uh, this specific configuration also includes specific parameterization for urban area. If you are interested to have more detail on this configuration, I reported in this, in this slide the DOI of the, this, the different scientific, scientific paper concerning this data, this data, this configuration. This is the pool of the 20 European cities that were identified in this service, also thanks to the, uh, to the involvement of the stakeholder, are, are uh, vulnerable to urban rural flooding. And then in the application, you will find for these 20 cities uh, information and the catalog of information. But now I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Alfredo Reder, that uh, will demonstrate to, uh, to you how to use the development artifact. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Paola. I will share my screen. Okay. Now uh, I will introduce uh, you to the data set and application developed in the frame of uh, uh, this uh, contract for the for a service for uh, reducing disaster risk reduction with, with the mainly related to urban clear flooding. Uh, we can identify two different chain. The first chain is uh, the one move from ex precipitation indication for Europe and European cities data set and is uh, devoted to um, feed to uh, application, ex precipitation statistics for Europe Explorer and catalog of past ex precipitation events. We can start from uh, this chain, uh, through which end user will browse throughout two pan-European product. The first one to explore, uh, and this, uh, it is the explorer, uh, to profile past precipitation characteristics. The second one is uh, an interactive catalog, one of the main pillars of this service uh, that allow user to detect and rank uh, ex past ex precipitation events in terms of affected area, magnitude, and uh, severity. As already said, for this application, analysis and observational data are turned into precipitation indicators, following literature approaches at different complexity and properly tailored to meet users' needs. What means? At European scale, uh, we uh, used HEOBS and HERA5 data to uh, compute these indicators, selected uh, in collaboration with the colleagues of KNMI in accord uh, from a list of XCDI uh, indicators and computed uh, with the collaboration of our technical um, staff at different temporal, temporal and re, temporal resolution. So daily, monthly, yearly, and 30 year, according to the type of indicator. Moreover, as novelty, uh, for indicators related to precipitation at fixed return periods, um, also, uh, here, even in collaboration with the KNMI colleagues, uh, we have decided to uh, consider also data provided by the ECAD network and interpolate this data onto EOMS grid. At the city scale, uh, the data set uh, include some indicators uh, uh, computed at daily scale and derived from the era 5 to kilometer, allowing city stakeholders to obtain the spatial distribution of precipitation during uh, specific extreme events. This is a list of uh, indicators uh, included in the, in the data set. We uh, reported the, uh, also the time scale, so monthly, yearly, thirty year, or daily. Now, uh, this is an overview of the data set. It's a short uh, video. In the download data section, the user will uh, select the spatial coverage, for example, City of Europe, the variable the city when the user selects city, the type of product, so ECA, DRA5, VOBS, or DRA5 to kilometer, the temporal aggregation, 
percentile and rating period for percentile and rating period based indicators and the time period so single year or climatology for the third tier indicators moreover as for all the uh, products that we have developed there are some product user guide providing uh, technical detail information and also algorithm to reproduce the computation as already mentioned, the, um, this data set uh, feed two application. The first one is a, a simply pan European Explorer for profiling past precipitation uh, characteristics. Uh, throughout this application, user can select the product type, the variable from this list, the temporal aggregation, monthly, yearly, the starting month or starting year and also the final month final year but there are some indicators like the one considered for the third year period in which uh, for which the application allow to select the third year another important skills is that um, this is a interactive live map by zooming user can change its nuts level moving from nuts zero up to as an instance nuts two so let's look to a short example of that application. Uh, for example, a query about total precipitation amount at year scale over Italy. When user click on the, the selected nuts, we'll apply a uh, other panel in which there are some map reporting the variable for the investigated period and a graph, a box plot graph in which some statistics are uh, reported. Obviously maps and graph are, uh, down, down, can be downloaded from, uh, on the personal computer. The second application um, I would like to spend uh, more words as this is a very important product uh, in this uh, service and this is a required uh, is important requirement by users. Um, we need to uh, define a methodological framework to detect and rank exim precipitation events in terms of affected area, magnitude and severity. Uh, the methodological chain is reported in this uh, uh, slide and start from the identification, detection of exim precipitation events and uh, a strategy to couple exim precipitation events with, when available, air empirical damages from external repositories to create an entry for the catalog. So this is the uh, methodology for the detection of exim precipitation events. It relies on uh, the a methodology developed by Ramos and colleagues, a methodology that we found uh, during a desk uh, review and that we address for our scope. The, ex the ex events ident identification relies on the values of daily standardized precipitation above the 99 percentile. This is an indicator uh, computed at the daily scale. When this variable is beyond one for any of the grid point for the user selected NUTS region in a particular day, it is assumed that there is an extreme event for that day. In such case, other statistics that are the, the affected area and event magnitude are calculated based on the values of daily standardized precipitation above the 95 percentile. In uh, this uh, picture, there is a short uh, workflow of the, uh, this uh, framework. Re regarding empirical damages from external repositories, they are compiled from multiple sources, mainly ANTS and NDAT dataset. This data cover in our application, the uh, European 27 member states include the United Kingdom and some countries of the European Free Trade Associations like Switzerland, Norway and Iceland. Moreover, the reported damage and losses are actualized and expressed in 2099 euro value. This is the list of data entries from the external repositories. This is a very important work of uh, harmonization. 
the Harrow report the variable that we use to couple the uh, X in precipitation event detected with the, the previous uh, um, routine and when available the uh, empirical uh, damages that are starting at date and regions affected. Okay, this is a short video on this application. The, um, the work is similar to the, first, to the Explorer. So uh, I will start only with a specific query to show how the catalog uh, will, have, will uh, be shown to the user. So for example, uh, events in October 2015 over Campania, user can find map reporting the spatial distribution of standardized precipitation for the identified day and a table reporting. In general, for the events area, magnitude and the rank, and when available, for example, for this entry, also the uh, information, ancillary information derived from external repositories. Okay, let's move to the second chain. This is the chain at city scale, for which we have developed a set of flood indicators and a specific application or a data uh, viewer. Uh, specifically, end user for the 20 European cities uh, introduced, introduced by Paola uh, will have access to a dedicated pluvial flooding hazard and risk product to detect the spatial distribution of water depth and affect damages at meter resolution for hourly precipitation maxima at different probability of uh, occurrence. This product has been uh, developed by CMCC and uh, colleagues from uh, JECO uh, Sistema. This is the methodological framework uh, adopted, uh, conceived adopted for the case studies as demonstrators. It uh, um, involved the definition of hourly rainfall intensity frequency curves derived from the ERA 5 at 2 kilometer uh, data set the um, mapping of pluvial flood hazard by using safer rain, the detection of flood extended water depth that are used as for input to derive the expected direct tangible damages and to feed the, the uh, data set. <clears throat> so a few words about the single step. Uh, regarding the uh, definition of uh, input uh, precipitation input at our scale, we uh, use the storm index method considering hourly uh, annual maximum precipitation extracted for each city from era 5 to 2 km. The storm index method approach uh, accounts for a probability distribution throughout the evaluation parameters uh, for a general, generalized X value model and a possible dependence on space and time by using a multiparametrical model like the Sherman model. Regarding the uh, workflow used uh, for, the, for, for mapping pluvial flood uh, hazard, uh, in the left part there is the uh, uh, complete workflow. I would like to put your attention on the uh, input variable that has a different type uh, some of these uh, included also in other Copernicus uh, product like the digital elevation model from UDEM, other derived from uh, other sources like LIDAR uh, digital elevation model that allow to refine the analysis at a very, very, very high resolution for, for three of the test cases, Con, Milan and uh, Pamplona. Finally, for the, the, for the estimation of uh, the damages, uh, we use the uh, definition of risk from the IPCC special report managing the risks of extreme events and disaster to advantage climate change. It relies on the concept of hazard, exposure and vulnerability. Hazard is derived from the uh, data provided by the safer rain model for each city, while exposure is defined as individual buildings that might get damaged due to a pluvial flood event and the building footprints are retrieved from OpenStreetMap. 
While for the vulnerability, it refers to the, uh, the green which exposed elements might get damaged to Pluvia flood hazard, and it is defined according to individual building classes and to reconstruction costs. So uh, this is a, uh, an overview of uh, this data set. Uh, also in this case, a user will select a variable, so expect damage, urban depression, water depth, or water mask, a specific return period, a city of interest, the type of digital elevation model, I would like to remember that leader is only for three city, and also in this case, there is a specific uh, documentation in which all the uh, engineering uh, techniques are uh, explained. Finally, uh, this data set feed a, an application very easy, is a data viewer that allow user to uh, visualize the uh, variable from uh, each data set. Sorry. So uh, there are uh, a panel of uh, selection, maps related to water depth at left expected damage at right. And uh, after that user select, for example, a city, con, a digital elevation model, for example, leader derived, and a specific return period, like 50 years, not only the map appear, but also a synthetic table reporting some uh, synthetic statistics, like precipitation input, mean water depth, and total damage. Okay, that's all, and uh, I leave the floor to uh, Guido for the final part of uh, this uh, webinar. Okay, thank you, Alfredo. Uh, as I previously, uh, previously said, uh, the, uh, this in, today we have not the canonical Q&A session, but uh, we'll have a Menti session. So I'd like to share with you my, my screen. Uh, okay. Um, we have different uh, questions. Uh, the first question um, addresses uh, a better understanding about the audience. So I would like uh, to suggest to uh, go to www.menti.com, uh, report the um, code, reporting the slides, and after you can answer the first question. The first question is very easy. Um, which sector are you working in? Uh, I will wait for a few seconds uh, to understand what is more or less the number of participants in this web survey, but for um, the other questions, uh, all the process could be uh, faster. So there are uh, the main part of the participant uh, work on, of course, on disaster risk reduction uh, uh, issues in general, uh, but uh, uh, we have also participants for agriculture, water, or more or less uh, the different, all the different sectors uh, seems to me uh, covered also, of course, in different way. So we have at the moment uh, uh, 36, uh, 37, uh, we wait uh, for the first questions for another few seconds and after we move to the second one. Okay, okay, we have 40 answers. 41, okay, okay. Then uh, uh, we'll move to the second one. Okay, please indicate the organization type you work for. We have different categories, public administration, public authorities, civil protection, insurance sector, consultancy, academic, NGO, and other. I uh, would like to recall that this um, survey 
will be made available also after this meeting. And so uh, I'd like to invite you to share with your networks uh, in order to increase uh, the number of participants also take into account uh, uh, the registration made available of the webinar. So for the next few weeks, uh, if you want, you can uh, participate to this web survey. Uh, for what concerns the organization, we have uh, the largest participation for the academic side, uh, but also from public administration uh, and uh, consultancy, we have different participants. Um, the number of participants in this case for uh, this question seems to be larger, so we can wait for other few seconds. More or less, the percentages seems to me quite similar. But now the participants are 52. So, okay, okay. Seem uh, we have not uh, substantial increase in the number of the participant uh, web survey for this question. And so we can move now to the third question. Okay. In this case, I would like to, we would like to understand which are the county of reference where you are working in uh, to understand uh, the audience. More or less, uh, as expected, we have a lot of uh, participants from Italy, also because the CMCC main contractor uh, was an Italian partner, but we have also a participant from the Netherlands, I can see from Ireland uh, and so on. We have at the moment about 42 answers, but uh, we can wait for uh, others. So we can wait for, again, uh, probably the potential number of participants in this survey is about 50. So we wait uh, to reach this number and after we'll move to the next question. We have also some participants uh, outside of the Europe. It's very interesting also because at the moment, the focus of the application is practically the Europe, uh, but it will be easily after uh, be applied also to the other context in some cases. So, okay, okay. I cannot see other answer or the increase of the number of participants. Uh, okay, okay. Now we'll move to the second part of the questions. Uh, I would like to recall that in total the number of questions will be 15, but this sector is more related to your expertise on data analysis and processing, okay, to understand what is more or less uh, uh, the expertise of the audience about uh, the use of data analysis if you are expert in data processing or you are simply uh, a user um, of uh, weather related data and so on. Uh, of course, we have a, a rate um, from zero means very low expertise up to 10 means of course uh, a high expertise on data analysis processing. Okay, we'll, we have a medium, uh, medium ranking, uh, six is the, the number, but you um, can see also a uh, shadow of about the distribution of different questions. Okay, we can have different peaks at different number. Uh, the number of participants now is uh, 53. Okay, uh, we can wait uh, again for a few seconds. It is important also to understand what is your feedback, uh, which could be the potential users of the artifacts that we have, or which be potentially interested to the data set in the application that we have developed and will made uh, soon available on Climate Data Store. So uh, we have uh, 50 six answers now and uh, we can move to the next questions the okay now uh, we focus our attention in a specific way about the climate data store 
And I, I would like to ask you if uh, I, have you ever used a data set in the application available in Climate Data Store? Okay. Okay, okay. It's probably a, some freezing in the software, but now all the answer uh, have been collecting. Okay, 13 participants uh, are really aware about the Climate Data Store products uh, or are experts and they prefer using a special way. Data set in this case are 16s. Uh, uh, otherwise, on the other end, we have uh, at the moment 23 people that up to now they have not used the uh, data set in the application in Climate Data Store. Okay, only two. People, it is interesting uh, data. Uh, are have used up to now only applications. So we have now uh, fifty-five uh, answers. So and then we can move uh, probably to the next one. If yes, uh, uh, okay, uh, it means if we have used uh, in, uh, other climate data store products, so which type of data or data related product used? We have identified different type of products, uh, the products related to the reanalysis, so era 5, era 5 land and wera. Uh, products uh, on related data related products to the observed data set, for example, Yobs. Uh, seasonal forecast or climate projection. Also in this case, we have uh, a large number of participants that have used products, data or products related to the analysis and climate projection. Okay. Of course, uh, in this case, uh, it, it, I enabled uh, multiple answers. Okay, we are. We can wait for a few seconds uh, to collect potential feedbacks. But of course, in this case, the number of answers is lower because it is uh, tailored only for uh, the people that answered yes in the previous question. So let's move to the. Uh, next uh, sector of questions, they are specifically related to the articles that have been developed within two contracts. So uh, I would like to ask you how interesting or innovative uh, do you rate the artifacts? So I have listed uh, the five products. There are the two data sets, extreme precipitation indicators for Europe and European cities, uh, flood indicators for European cities, uh, the two application extreme precipitation statistics for ex, uh, Europe Explorer, catalog of past extreme precipitation events. Finally, the data viewer about urban pluvial, pluvial flood risk analysis. So we have, uh, uh, seems to me good performances, a special way for the catalog and for extreme precipitation statistics, uh, of course, so if we move on the uh, on the answer, I can see also the specifics about uh, the answer. Okay, the largest uh, rank is given for at the moment for the catalog at the urban pluvial flood risk analysis. Uh, while uh, it, it seems at, at this stage, at least, uh, less interest in the extreme precipitation indicators. But of course, also for this case, we have a rank uh, quite have about seven. So we have now 44 answers. In this case, you 
we can wait for a few seconds uh, because of course it is hard uh, harder to answer to different parts of the questions is a good food probably it is a good feedback for has uh, that we have uh, involved in the contract because uh, probably it is a good uh, uh, insight that we have uh, collected well the, the feedbacks, uh, the insight, the requirement from different user, user during the user requirement stages. So we have uh, uh, up to now 45 answers. Okay, okay. We have not uh, substantial increase and uh, okay. We can move uh, probably to the next question. Okay, okay. It is important for us also to understand uh, your view, your feedback. Uh, of course, you have not up to now used uh, in first person the, the application, but it, as at first sight, how user friendly do you consider the application developed in the contract? Uh, so we, we are now focusing our attention in a special way only on about the application uh, because for the data set, uh, the, the framework is uh, uh, similar to for the all the products available in Climate Data Store, but now we are focusing our attention on the application. Okay, we have uh, um, developed the products that are in part quite different from the others in Climate Data Store, and now we are asking uh, your feedback about this one. Probably it is, will be more robust, uh, also more interesting after the application will be released and made available to all the users. As uh, recorded before, it will be, uh, all the application probably will be uh, made available for the first part of the October. Okay, okay. Also in this case, of course, we have a rank uh, from zero. 10 where zero uh, means uh, low user friendly high user friendly for 10. we wait for a few seconds again okay 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 33 and now Okay, move to the next one. Do you consider comprehensive the list of the indicators including in the data set to characterize the EV precipitation impacts? In this case, I am asking you to write yes or no, don't write to the, these questions. Uh, otherwise, if you consider that other indicators should be included on different time scale, on different uh, areas, on, uh, uh, now we are asking you a feedback about the list of indicators included in the data set to characterize um, EV precipitation. Okay, in this case, all these yes concern the same answers from different uh, participants. In this case, we have up to now 10 answers collected. Okay, it is asked uh, and measures for. Uh, to include also future projection uh, because up to now we have used only data as made available from gridded observation or uh, um, reanalysis uh, information by about higher percentiles uh, about the uncertainties so a measure of uh, robustness or combine this information with uh, uh, fluvial uh, information provided by fluvial dynamics. Okay, it is asked also an update of the of the data set, take into account uh, that is at the moment cover only a specific period, but of course all the products made uh, possible the continuous update of the product. So. Uh, someone asked for uh, also data at, at sub daily scale that will be available by using, for example, uh, reanalysis that provide data at hourly time scale. 
we have uh, at the moment 25, 26, uh, 27 answers. Okay. Okay, we will wait for two seconds again and after uh, also take it back on the seasonality, river catchment, uh, also moving from the other to the risk. So someone asked for uh, so social vulnerability, also economic aspects, uh, seems other uh, topic of interest. So, okay. How reliable and clearly under understandable do you consider the approach selected to identify the events, including the catalog? Of course, in this case, our view is quite different because we start for the identification of events from uh, a atmospheric point of view, not from the point of view of the impacts, but we include or not the events in our catalog according to the approach suggested by Ramos and made available and explained in the user guide when the product will be made available. But uh, at the moment, we want to collect your feedbacks about this one also, of course, is more consistent answer, a systematic answer can be collected after your use of the, the application. Okay. Okay, okay, we wait for a few seconds again and after we can move to the next question. Okay, okay, it is important also your feedback about, do you want suggesting further data set for empirical damages beyond those are currently used in the catalog that has been listed in the presentation uh, given by Alfredo? Of course, also in this case, uh, no or not answer means that uh, the, the data set that we have used can be sufficient, otherwise you can suggest further empirical uh, data set for empirical damages if you consider that could be useful for uh, improving the catalog. Okay, it is suggested to use directly data from insurance when made available from them. Okay, we can for okay arrive uh, also at resolution at uh, higher resolution or no aerostat fiscal poverty is considered okay <coughs> Okay, we wait for a few seconds and after we move to the next one. Okay, sorry, I have seen other answers. Okay. Okay, let's move to the next one. How reliable and useful do you consider the simulation chain used for uh, pluvial flood risk analysis? Of course, it is uh, briefly described by Alfredo in uh, his talk. Uh, of course, uh, uh, he gave some indication also about the paper of reference, uh, but now we, we want your first, at first glance feedback about uh, the simulation chain uh, that of course it should be expedition because it should be applied to different costs and all over the Europe also where the uh, information can be different in terms of uh, uh, exposure data, in terms of uh, uh, other analysis and so on. So 
it is, it is uh, the um, simulation chain that has been designed by uh, different partners uh, involved in the project, for example, Geco Sistema, in fir first of all, Geco Sistema and uh, RAS division CMCC with the collaboration of the other division for what concerns the hazard analysis and the input about the precipitation. So take into account, of, for example, uh, the analysis the, uh, using exploiting the data uh, by the downscaling of Viva 5 at two kilometers. So also in this case, we have uh, encouraging answer. The rank is uh, 7.2. So also the distribution uh, seems to me quite uh, encouraging. Uh, we have now about 30, Answers. Uh, okay. Okay. We have not. Uh, okay. 29. Okay. Okay. We can move to the next one now. Okay. Uh, which are cities could be interesting to analyze? Uh, someone asked also in previous uh, answers to include other cities. So we would like to ask you which could be your uh, interest for other cities to be as because of interest for you, for socioeconomic condition, uh, for your appartenance, for uh, because uh, do you know that our uh, um, affected by pluvial flood uh, uh, phenomena and so on. We have different requests for Istanbul. Someone's from Spanish Mediterranean area. Someone from Greece and Italy, of course, because as I said before, there are a lot of participants from Italy. Someone asked to cover in more homogeneous way, probably Italy uh, adding cities in the central and uh, southern part. It is recorded also Genova that has uh, been uh, affected uh, different times by uh, flood uh, flooding in the recent years. He cited uh, Milano, but it is already covered by the, uh, the analysis that we have carried out now. Okay, okay. We wait for a few seconds and after we can move to the next. There are some uh, suggestions also for cities that were uh, outside of the Europe that would be uh, interesting to understand how uh, can work the simulation chain also in very different contexts. Okay, we wait for a few seconds. Uh, okay, okay, we can move to the next question. Okay, according to your view, which could be the next stages to improve the artifacts? Now we are asking you different types of improvement on short term uh, to, for example, to improve uh, uh, some gaps uh, in these products or on long term. How can improve but uh, involving uh, uh, larger resources and so on? So we are asking you uh, a feedback on different time horizon about how to improve all the products, uh, all the uh, data set and the application that we have uh, presented today. Okay, it is asked the uh, co-production with the stakeholders. In, in, in a way, they have been the, the selection of the cities, the types of the outputs have been already 
uh, take into account the, the the data, the stakeholders requirement that have been collected during the first stages of the, the project the, or the contract, but of course we can uh, improve, of course, also these aspects. Someone asked for combining pluvial and fluvial flood risk. In other cases, again, the idea or the suggestion to uh, to move from not only from the past uh, but take into account also future it is uh, reported there are uh, again including other cities of future projection replacing uh, EOBS with the opera radar could be another interesting insight okay someone asked for to move from a very specific contract devoted to pluvial flood risk up to a more multi-risk approach. That will be, of course, very interesting for sector information system to support disaster risk reduction. Someone asks again, uh, introduce more accurate DTM and data on pluvial drainage absorption. So improving in some cases, uh, uh, the simulation chain, of course, in the in the catalog, in the data viewer, uh, also in the data set, at the moment reported the information and the comparison for three cities uh, uh, between uh, data set uh, DTM with different resolutions. So first insights about these issues can be uh, derived from uh, the current version of the product, but of course, uh, all these aspects should be uh, deepened in the next stages make the algorithm public, but probably uh, all can, it, it is available on climate on, on CDS. Okay, someone asked for stronger involvement in national meteorological services. Someone has been involved in, at this stage for the development, for the design of this approach. Uh, but of course, all these aspects could be uh, refined in next stages. Additional hazards, again, uh, could be very interesting and use of the decadal projection. So now I can see 29, 30 answers. Okay, uh, we can wait for a few seconds. So, okay. Okay, seems to me that we have not uh, other feedbacks and then I would like to thank you uh, for your support. Uh, it is a very good uh, number of participants to, in this case, very long uh, Menti web survey, but it's, you know, your feedbacks are very interesting for us to improve uh, all, uh, all the application and uh, that's it that, that we have already um, development. So now I'd like to thank you for your attention. I report in the slide the link uh, to the landing page where you can find all the brief information about our contract, uh, about the links uh, to the data set and the application where uh, will be made available uh, all the next stages of the contract. Now I uh, it is my pleasure to leave the floor again uh, to Paola uh, for the final, uh, for the conclusion uh, uh, greetings. Thank you again. Paola, the floor is yours. Thank you, Guido. Thank you for your nice Mintimeter session. Very, very interesting results. And um, okay, I will spend these uh, last five minutes to thank all the partners of this um, consortium, uh, Gerard and Keys for KNMI, Claire for the Wageningen Institute, but also Stefano for Jeco Sistema, Arthur, Yaro, Marco and Mirko from the CMCC team, and Nicora for the administrative support, and also Isabella, Chiara and Carlo and all the CMWF team for supporting us in the development of this data set. It was a grateful experience for, 
for us. We really learn a lot and uh, we hope that um, all these artifacts can be useful and please don't hesitate to write us if you think that additional improvement uh, can be possible. We are very happy to support us, um, to support you in the use of this data set and application. Uh, thank you.